Welcome to the Gadgets for Families weekly bonus or the post show, depending on how you follow us and how you consume our content. I'm Greg Cunningham. Hey, and I'm Jay Benjamin. Thank you guys for sticking around with us. This one's going to be a fun one. You folks seem to enjoy these these blasts from the past kind of throwback episodes. So I'm excited yeah, and for this it. One's, this one's kind of throwback and kind of not. And uh, But we ran a little long on the other one. I think this will be short. If you haven't checked out this week's regular video, we talk a lot about we had some catch up we needed to do. We have a couple of funny stories. And then we also talked about iPads a little bit. And then we spent quite a bit of time talking about tech for smart homes or tech for homes in general. Now, it's all on the premises. Jason's trying to help me figure out what I want to do with my RV. But don't be turned off by that because all of it is applicable to a home as well. So or an apartment yeah. or whatever you got. So uh, check out that episode if you didn't. But for today, we're not going to go retro retro, um, yeah. even though one of mine is retro. But we're going to talk about analog games. So it's funny. We have a, a, a bookstore chain that sells a lot of the church literature and stuff like that. And here mm -hmm. in Utah. And uh, I go in there at my peril. Normally, they have kids books on really good discounts. Kids books are expensive. Um, they are. But they have them like really good discount. And I told and the wind's starting to blow here. So I don't know if it's going to mess with the sound. But um, I told my wife, I said, I don't know if you should go in here. And she walked in because they had the kids' books on a clearance table out front, outside the store. But okay. I walked in, and I was back. That's a I good went, draw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went back to the games section. She ended up at the games, ta a different display table that had the bunch of the games. And we walked out of the store with like $100 worth of card games. So <laughs> Nice. Um, that yeah. got me thinking, you know what? Analog games were the thing at one point, and I didn't know how many, how much you do with analog games, but I know we do a lot of analog games when we get together as a family. So today what I want to do is just talk through some of our favorite board or card or other kind of analog games. So I've got a list. Right. Jason, yeah. you've got a small list. A small list. So uh, you say you don't know how much there's still a thing. I think there's still a thing. Oh, yeah. Right? I think people oh, yeah. still really enjoy it because there's some on my list that not a holiday goes by that yep. when at least when we host or we're at uh, my in-law's house or, or my brother's uh, uh, house or something that someone says that you bring this game. Yes, we brought the game and we all get yep. into it and battle it out. So, yep. yeah, yeah, this one's going to be fun. All right. Well, let's just round robin this. So I'll let you start. I'm not doing these. I think I'm actually going to share my favorite one first um, because it's got a story behind it. So these okay. aren't in any and uh, they aren't in any order like our favorites or the ones we play the most. That These are just great analog games that we like. So, Jason, why don't right. you start with one? So I'll, so I'll save my favorite one for last because that one has a bit of a story to it. But I'll start with one of the ones who we talked about a while back and that's monopoly right so we always play monopoly this company uh is it hasbro uh uh milton bradley milton bradley yeah yep they had me buy monopoly at various points throughout my life over and over again as well as on the xbox and we played it digitally but <laughs> this one is a bit differently this one is a game called monopoly deal and it's monopoly but it's card based and man, it is so much fun. It is fast paced. The kids enjoy it. It's easy to understand. We're not counting. There's not a banker counting out money and stuff like that. You know, the game is just based on to where you still get that good competitive monopoly feel to it. Um, but uh, without all of the hassles of having to deal with the, the banking and stuff like that. So there's still some of that. It's still some of that, and it's it is still true monopoly. It it's um, but it's card based, and it is really cool. Um, and it's up up to eight players, I believe. You can still set your own house rules and things like that. You know how you set your own house rules and stuff when it comes to to uh, monopoly. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun for adults and kids. So monopoly deal is a good way to get your monopoly fix with the family, and not have to deal with the board and all of the pieces and losing all of the cards and stuff like that. So check it out. I recommend that one highly. Yeah, I can't tell you how many versions of Monopoly I just sold in my yard sale or <laughs> right. gave away because we had so many. I think I kept one. I think I kept the pirate-themed one. 
And then I yep. think Wyatt took the Star Wars one that was an earlier edition Star Wars one that the pieces were metal, not plastic. Oh, yeah. 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 So he took that one. I remember one we had that was an electronic version where you had a little thing that you placed a credit card on and it had codes yes. or it had little notches on the back and you knew which one and you tell it how much went in and how much came out so you didn't have to do the math and stuff so yeah monopoly yeah. was on my honorable mentions list yeah always a good family game all right i'll save my favorite one for last so uh, i'm gonna cover two because they're fairly fairly simple so one of them is a generic called card game called hand and foot so you basically deal mm -hmm. everybody two sets of 10 cards you start with the first one and you're building what we call books so books are sets right three of a kind mm -hmm. four of a kind five of a kind when you get to seven of those then you get to close the book and you have to get a certain combination of books to win the game and get rid of all your cards so we can play this one for hours and hours on and and i just recently bought a game called antiquity quest now i don't know how widespread across the nation this company has gone but it's a company called grandpa beck's games okay and there's he just they just started putting out games and games and games and games. And these games are absolutely fantastic. There's going to be several of them on my list here. So, but this one called Antiquity Quest is a simplified version of Hand and Foot. But instead of using traditional playing cards, you're using uh, cards that are different sets of uh, treasures kind of thing. So that one's super awesome. Again, it's called Hand and Foot or Antiquity Quest if you want the Grandpa Bex version of that one. So... I'll go so with these that are the one same first. game. They're the they same game. They are essentially just... the same game. Yes. The Antiquity Quest is easier. It actually frustrates me because I can't clean up on it like I can with the other one because I can kind of count cards and it kind of doesn't matter how many decks you throw in. It's just a thing. <laughs> okay. And uh, so everybody gets mad because I can I know who's got what in hand and foot, right. even if we right. have six decks of cards. But with the uh, Antiquity Quest, it's easier to and the hand. So I can't okay. like learn what everybody has and hold all of my stuff until the very end and then just dump everything out and be done and stick everybody. So, um, yeah, I got to figure out, we just started playing that one. So the rules are a little different, but yeah, basically the same game. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of a, kind of a great equalizer. If they know you're counting the cards, just it kind of makes it puts you on a level playing ground with everybody else. I can, I can understand why everybody likes to play that. Yeah, the problem is the way my um, the way my brain works mm -hmm. does not make it terribly fun for my family to play card games with me. Right, so right. They prefer to play games that have a lot more luck and chance versus strategy and skill when it comes to cards. So I just sent you a link to Grandpa Beck's website, okay? So you can see a bunch of those too. I just added a note here to my list, but yeah, I'll save the uh, save the link and check cool. it out. All right, so what's my your next one. My next pick is something that's, I mean, super competitive at my house. You know, everyone's here for New Year's. My nieces, nephews, uh, uh, my my in-laws, my brother. Uh, this one gets really competitive to the, to the point where some people don't like to play because some people, I'm not going to say my wife, kind of, I don't know how she does it, but it almost seems like she's cheating because her and one of my nieces, Jasmine, they always seem to be the last two battling it out and they always seem to win. So they figured out something that, uh, that they're doing. Uh, but, uh, it's phase 10. So it, it's like Monopoly. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not like Monopoly, like, uh, Uno, right? These yep. are like the Uno cards, right? And you build these sets. Yep. So basically you take, um, each phase is its own combination of cards, right? You can build, uh, the first phase will be, four of the same color, right? So everyone right. plays, they pull until they get four. The next one will be a run of three. So you have to get three in order and then a set of two colors, right? Or three number threes or four number fours or something like that, right? Is each phase. And you go all the way up to phase 10 and you battle it out and you're stuck on your one phase until you get either that run of four and the two match and pair or the run of three. So you're stuck there and everyone else moves on to the next phase. Yeah. And of course, if you get to phase 10, you win, but the people with the most points or the least amount of points are the, are the, uh, the winners. Right. And, uh, Oh man, it gets real competitive. It gets real competitive and, uh, we love it. We love it. It's a good yep. way to battle it out. Not so much kid friendly. 
so like the younger kids won't play it with us like we play Monopoly. Um, but yeah, really good, really good family game. So Phase Ten, if you guys hadn't played that one, check that one out. So there's a another version of it similar to it called Five Crowns that's super similar. Uh, oh yeah, I've game. heard of Five Crowns. Yep. And then we used to play a game called Shanghai that's on my honorable mentions list. But we used to play it, and it's it's that you go through this sequence. So super super fun. Uh, okay. Let me go with another card game from Grandpa Beck called Cover Your Assets. So this one's got different kind of assets. Like it's got jewelry, it's got cash, it's got homes, cars, different things like that. And you build up sets of these, all right? So you build up these mm-hmm. and then you place them in front of you. And whoever has the most points at the end of the hand in the game, well, there's in front of them, they win. But here's the catch. So let's say I've got a set of... uh a really nice set of homes in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. If the person whose turn it is has a home in their hand, they can turn that card around and say, I want your homes. Okay. Okay. And then it becomes a bidding war. It comes down to whoever has the most homes in their hand, not down in front of them, but in their hand. So if they have three and I only have two, they get to take, all of my homes, what's in front of me, and all of the ones that I bid to try and keep really? them. They get so to steal them really and take them from me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very competitive. Okay. I like the sound of that. And yeah. that's that's the, that's the type that my family likes. Too. Yep. Cover your assets, Grandpa Bex. Now, I just bought, we haven't played it yet. Apparently, there's an advanced version of Cover Your Assets that he just released. It's in the trailer. We haven't played it yet. So when you go look at his site, Cover your assets, and then there's another one. I can't remember what it's called, but it's the advanced version. It's a more complicated version of Cover Your Assets. So check it out. These games are all amazing. The art quality on these is all hand-drawn art. It's just phenomenal on these. So I'm going to send this link to to our group chat, our family group chat, and I'm going to have everyone vote on which game they want to play the next next get-together. And... uh, I'm going to buy it and we're going to play it. But this one sounds fun. I like this yeah. one. So Cover Your Kingdom is the uh, the next level up. It's an adaptation of it. Okay. So, yeah. All right. All right. So next for me, one everyone knows about. It's uh, the Hispanic version is called Loteria, right? It's just Mexican bingo. And um, fun for all ages. Um, some families like to... Uh, like to wager, you know what I mean? A, a little money. They'll put some bets down. They'll put, and we're talking quarters. No one's putting hundred dollar bills on the table or whatever, but you buy in for like 10 cents and you, you wager a, a, a few pennies here and there or whatever. And you, you can win the pot or you can win hands or you can win things like that. But basically it's just bingo. And, and uh, yeah, good, good time. Family fun. The kids love it. Um, not really much to say because everyone, at some point, has played have played bingo in their life, and uh, loteria is not much different than uh, than regular bingo. So, bingo is always a good good family go to. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into a couple of board games now. One of them is called okay. Revolution. So this one's like takes place in like medieval times, and every round I haven't played it in a while, but it's definitely really, really good. It's one that I kept. I'm thinking of the games that I kept, right. That I didn't, Mm -hmm. that are sitting in a box in storage rather than in the yard sale. But every game, every round you like bid on certain things, but you don't, you can't see what other people are bidding. You can't see what they have. And so you could cancel each other's bids out or somebody could outbid you and the goal is to take over this like castle sized place. And so you got to decide, you know, the armory is worth so many points and the, the moat is mm-hmm. worth so many points. And so there's this strategy about which combination of things do I want to be able to try to win the game. So it's called Revolution. It's got a cannonball on the front. It's in a red and yellow box. Super, super fun game. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a, a lot of a lot of numbers games with you, Greg. You've always been a numbers guy. A lot of <laughs> well, a lot of numbers games with with you. So, but still, sounds like fun. It, it sounds yeah. sounds really entertaining. Yeah, so it it, my, it is definitely fun. My my uh, last one, and again, I didn't have many on my list, and I said it came with a bit of a story, but it's it's not really a long one. I just give you a bit of a backstory. 
Um, when we moved in, when we when we bought the house, uh, we were newlyweds. There were no, I, I had my my oldest son, but uh, you know he was just here on on the weekends or every other weekend or something like that. So really, the home was just me and Wendy here. Didn't plan for grandkids and and all these other new Benjamins that that seemed to show up on my doorstep every day. But uh, so we would host most of the family here. Every weekend, every other weekend, we would have all of the family get togethers on holidays. Easter, uh, we would do pumpkin carving and stuff on on um um you know on Halloween and, and Christmas is we're we're here and everything. Just always just was just a family home for extended family and stuff. And one of the things we would do in the garage was uh just good old fashioned darts. And I had a digital uh, dartboard, so it would keep score. It, it had hundreds of different types of games on it, and um, yeah, just darts. We would have tournaments. We would have uh, families against families, husbands against wives, kids against families. Uh, we would pair off one child and one adult together, and we would just have a blast with with me, all of my in laws, my family, and all of that. Now. My garage is to a point now where you can barely stand in there with all of the company equipment and personal equipment and, <laughs> and everything is in there. So there's hardly any wall space to even mount a uh, a dartboard. But my dartboard, I ended up selling it at a yard sale because it just didn't get much use after a few years. And I figured some family would use it. It was one of those soft tips uh, uh, dartboards. And like I said, it was digital. So it had the scoreboard up. And it would talk to you. Uh, uh, it would talk uh, crap to you whenever uh, you would throw a, uh, you know, a, a miss dart or something like that. Really cool, good, just good family fun. So nothing beats just good old fashioned darts, man. If you're a dart player, whether you're good or not, you know, it, it's it's fun to just just play it. And that was the whole point behind me purchasing the Pac-Man machine, because that was supposed to revive the whole family tournaments and having family over and instead of darts this time, it was going to be Pac-Man and uh, still hadn't refurbished the machine. Like I, <laughs> like I wanted to, uh, but that's on my list of things to get done. That's one of the things that I've been putting off that, uh, you know, I find joy in, uh, but I spend most of my time, of course, standing in front of the popper or at a market or in front of the little popper doing uh, one of the popular flavors or something like that. And, and, uh, yeah, so I'm going to get back to more me time and family yes. time and less work time. And that Pac-Man machine is going to replace this dart machine that I that I talked about. And we're going to start having the family over for uh, family tournaments and stuff. Only Pac-Man this time instead of, <laughs> yeah. instead of darts. So two things. Mm -hmm. Games, solo gaming, head buried in a digital device not the best right yeah. for mental health and all that kind of stuff this yeah. kind of interactive get with a family do family kind of gaming stuff there's nothing better than to bond your yeah. family you know sunday afternoon after dinner sitting around a table playing cards or playing a board game or whatever the case may be so that's yeah. one point there so this is a great way to do that kind of stuff we had a dartboard down in the unfinished basement um yeah and Wyatt and his friends always hung out in the unfinished basement. One day, Wyatt comes up and says, Dad, one of the pipes is dripping. I'm like, okay. And it was PVC because the house is mm -hmm. a little older. So I go down there, and there's a pin size hole <laughs> in the pipe above the right. dartboard. Oh. <laughs> so it was soaking the dartboard. So, nope, nope, nope. They had somehow thrown a dart. And hit oh, the pipe a dart hit just the... <laughs> right to make a pin size right. hole in yep. the pipe. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh -oh. uh, I'll mention I have three more on my list that I'll mention here. Settlers of Catan. Everybody's heard of Settlers of Catan. There's yep. a digital version, which I've played too, which was super fun. But we've played a lot of Settlers of Catan. Um, there is a series of games called Flux, F-L-U-X-X. -X. Now, I have the pirate version. I've actually had two versions of this, but I have the pirate version. I first played this at Scout Camp one time. This is a card game mm -hmm. that 
every time somebody plays a turn, they could change the rules of the game. So you start off by draw one, discard one, and you're trying to build up different things and all that kind of stuff. But somebody could play a new rule card that says now you draw two and discard one, or di uh, you can only hold five cards in your hand. And so the whole time you're playing this card game, the rules are changing. So you get this strategy okay. going where you've got all the cards in your hand that you need and you're ready to kill everyone. And the person before you plays it, you can only have two cards in your hand and you have to get rid of everything but two or swap hands, right? I mean, so it's called flux because the rules are always in flux. And of course, because right. I'm so into pirates, I have the pirate version. So it's pirate flux, F-L-U-X-X. -X. It is so much fun. So, so much fun. Let me ask you this about the rules. So these are preset rule changes, right? No one's thinking of rules on the fly. Right. That would kind of be cards. chaos. So you draw okay, cards. Okay, good. You would draw a card that had a rule, and if you decide you want to play it, then it changes the rules. Now you could discard the rules. So if it doesn't work in your favor, so there's it. No, it's not. You just make them up as you go, like you do with Monopoly. Okay. But no, it's it's they're on the cards, and you play them on the cards. Okay, that sounds that sounds more structured. Still chaotic, but not like someone just making up rules on the fly. So preset rules can change at any time. I like that. I like that yeah. kind of chaos. Yeah. And they have Star Wars versions. They have Marvel versions of this. So like the thing about Pirate Flux is you get scurvy is one of the downsides, right? You get a card that's <laughs> right. scurvy. Or there's one card that says if you always talk like a pirate, you get an extra card. So you're, okay. so you're talking like this while you're playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So super, super, super fun. So. Uh, before I mention my last one, so there's another one that's Grandpa Beck's called Pirate King. That one's super fun. Dustin will not play it with us. He's so bad at it, he just refuses to play. Um, mm -hmm. Risk, got to give an honorable mention to Risk. I mean, it's it's yep. Risk, right? And then honorable mention to Uno and all of its variations, including Uno Max right. and Duo. There's one that's called Duo that we have that's really, really fun. So those are my honorable mentions. Yeah. So, all right. Now, this game, story behind this game, when Karen and I first got married, we were friends with another couple that had kids about our age. And you're mm -hmm. young, you don't have any money, so you can't do anything. So we would do game night. And we would go over to their home because they had a house. We had an apartment or condo. We would go over to their home. They had more kids than us, too. And we would play this game until 1 or 2 in the morning. And then we would have to take a picture of it or document where it was because then we'd have to come back the next time and keep going okay. with the game. This so game you pack was, everything away. You just yeah, take a picture yeah. of it. Okay. Yep. This game was so good that a few years ago, it's way out of print. It's super old. And when I tell you the game, you'll understand why, but I had to go on eBay and buy the game on eBay. And it cost me something like a hundred bucks for okay. this one board game. So the game is called, and so it's set back in the day when the rail lines ruled the U.S., right? And so it's a map right. of the U.S., and you've got all the major cities back in that day, and then you've got rail lines that connect the cities, and different rail lines okay. go from different city to different city. You know, like the uh, one of them goes from, like, California clear up into the East Coast. It runs along the bottom of the U.S., clear up into the East Coast, right? So okay. you've got different So like size an Ayn Rand kind of, yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, Alice Shrug kind of, kind of yeah. time period. Yeah. yeah. So back when they decided that the rail barons were becoming monopolistic, right? I mean, that's yeah. the whole point behind the monopoly laws in the U.S. Not monopoly the yeah. game, but the actual U.S. laws. Right? Yeah, actual monopolies, right. Yep. So you start off with some money like you do with monopoly. Similar concept to monopoly. You buy railroads as you go along. And the way you earn money is you you roll the dice to pick your home city and then you roll the dice again to pick your destination. And so okay. and then depending on how far that is, you get a certain amount of money when you complete the destination and your turns are I got to roll the dice and I move that many spots. Right? And so it could take me 2, 3, 10 turns to get from one point to another if I just rolled a whole bunch of ones. So right. So that's what you do, and that's how you earn your money, and then you buy rail lines. Well, every turn, if you're on an unowned rail line, you're paying 
a thousand dollars into the bank, right? To okay. use, it's like your ticket. Now, if somebody else owns the line that you're running on, then you're paying them to use their okay. rail line, right? And so that game, it was just so much fun. And then to win the game, you have to have $200,000 in cash and mm -hmm. you have to make it to your home destination where you started originally from. Okay. And so part of the game is you have to keep track of where everybody's home destinations are. So let's say I had $200,000 in cash. If I had $200,000 in cash, I could say I'm going home. Now, I have to, I don't have to tell them where my home is. They just have to remember. But I have mm -hmm. to get home with the $200,000. So if I have to take a rail line where I've got to pay $10,000 in rent to somebody, I've got right, to account right. for that. And so it's this whole thing about when do I go home, when do I don't? Well, the right. other catch is if while you're on your way home, somebody jumps over you, you have to pay them like $50,000, right? And so it's this whole thing about, can I get home before somebody else causes me to get under that $200,000 yeah. limit, right? So this game, it was just crazy fun. The box is like old school, like, <clears throat> you know, uh, Lucy, the Lucy show era kind of art. Uh, you know, back back in those days, it is yeah. just the funnest game. They have a Rail Baron app, but it's to supplement the game. So instead of having to look up on the chart all the destinations and stuff and how much money you get, you can just use that. You put in where you are, where you're going, all this kind of stuff. The U.S. is broken out into southeast, northwest, west, you know, different quadrants. So you roll to pick a quadrant, then you roll to pick your city and it is yeah. just it's the funnest funnest game um so that is my number one game of all time we own it uh like i said i paid a lot of money for it and ran the risk of it not having all the pieces it did um oh good yeah it is just it's so much fun but unfortunately you got to have like at least four people uh otherwise yeah. it's just not my wife won't play one on one with me on those kinds of games because. <laughs> well, it sounds like the right amount of strategy. It sounds like the right amount of risk of, of luck, and and uh, or chance. You know, rolling the dice and, and yep. things like that, and the right amount of numbers for you. And yeah. I'm looking. I see it is pretty pricey. I'm seeing some for ninety nine bucks used on eBay. I see one a hundred and thirty dollars at Board Game Geeks. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's pretty pricey, $127 on Etsy. I see my one that's in pretty bad condition at Barnes & Noble's, but for that one's 70 bucks. so yeah. Yeah, that was my wife's Christmas present one year. So Yeah, really cool, really cool. I have to check that out. Yeah. I don't think I'll be spending 100 bucks for it, though, because no one would want to play that with me. Well, at least now we know that if I ever haul my trailer down to Texas, we can hang out and just play some board games, too, instead right, of just right. talking tech, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's that's. I I definitely want to play something like this. Cool. Sounds like fun. But you already gave me the heads up to it, how you're counting cards. So no card games. So definitely, definitely <laughs> board game. <laughs> so, but yeah, like like you said earlier, man, all of this stuff is you know we love our games, right? You 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 have your Switch, and you know I have my Xbox and my games that I love, and we we can bury our heads down and and any number of games on our iPads or something like that. I've been really digging into some of these old emulators and stuff like that that I'm I'm going to install on my iPad. Oh, but sorry, man, sidebar. Beats... Did you see that Delta oh. emulator is available on your iPad now? Yes, I saw I installed it last night. I hadn't installed any any ROMs or anything for it, but yep, I yeah. did install it. IPad. So a full iPad version, not the blown yep. up iPhone version of it. It's, yeah. it's an uh, iPad version. So really cool, really cool. But, you know, that's just no substitute. You know, I talked about earlier, I mentioned, you know, you guys listened to the last half of the show, mentioned, you know, spending more time with my sons and stuff and not just on devices or text messaging and, and uh, or, or FaceTiming. But um, and these games, man, this is this is a way you can really bond. It, it really shows, you know, different emotions comes out, too, in these different games. Uh, yeah. 
you see who works best together, right? You, some of these, uh, I talked about like phase 10 and stuff. Some of these aren't even team games, but you'll see different family members and stuff team up against, you know, you or someone else or, or, uh, just different things like that. You know, so much comes out. You learn a lot about your family and stuff. So it's not just about the game. Yeah. It's about bonding and, and learning, uh, uh, different, uh, uh, personalities and stuff like that. So and learning yeah, to work you, through differences. When we played, yeah, uh, yeah. we played uh, Rail Baron when everybody was home uh, for the holidays. So it was. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not naming names here because it's not a great story. <laughs> but I, I, I basically gave up and let myself die and walked away because I just I could feel so much tension and conflict with one of my kids. So right, right. Yeah, I was just like, okay, it's just not not worth it yeah. so yeah. but yeah but you learn to work through stuff like that right yep. your, your your option was to just go ahead and just give it up call it a game and and you know let the other person win yep it, it's you know you learn all of that kind of stuff so you know if you guys haven't played bonded i know we this is a tech show so we're always talking about digital games and digital media and digital things like that but Man, there's still no substitute. Grab some of these card games. Like I said, I'm going to send this uh, the Grandpa Beck's games to my my family group chat, and we're going to pick a game that we're going to play at the next uh, family gathering and stuff. You know, grab one of these card games. Grab one of these board games and just get into it. And like I said, the cool other cool thing about Grandpa Beck's is just the quality. Um, the hand-drawn art, how much work they put into to making the games. I read an article about how they got started and how long it takes them to put out a new game and stuff. So you'll love the quality uh, of those games. So, okay. And I think they have, they used to have, I don't know if they do now they've got really big, but they used to have a, you know, free replacement for life. Like if you lose something or something, they'll send you the replacement cards and stuff too. So, yeah. Well, that's all good for small businesses, but when you, (laughs) <laughs> when you get to a certain, yeah. you get to a certain number of of cu- customers, you know, yep. you have to do away with some of that stuff. So, yep. I wouldn't expect that, but uh, I, I do uh, look forward to seeing the quality and stuff of yep. these games. All right, everybody, that's it. Go get some games, have some fun. Uh, check out the other video this week, and as always, uh, we'll hope to be back next week. We keep saying we're recording next week, and then we have stuff come up. I think we'll be back next week. More. Yeah. Uh, trailer tech follow up on some of the stuff we did and jason got anything to close us out no thanks guys i'll see you at the board game okay later